Yay for Tonys and Oscars and Emmys and Grammys. There's no red carpet because they're home in their jammies. From Melrose Place to Broadway to Janeway and her crew. Let Seth and James bring all the stars to you. Anywho. They're entertaining everyone. So who's going to grouse? Just sit right back and you'll hear some tales on Stars in the Hello, everyone. Welcome to Stars in the House. I'm James Wesley. I'm Seth Dudeski. We both just got haircuts That's by right. Julie. That's right. Thank you, Julie. It had been in need for quite a while. Yes, Queen. Um, we are here in Italy, the <laughs> land of naked boys, as, yes. they, as the lyric says. <laughs> um, hi, Sith people. Uh, this is Stars in the House, which is something that we've been hosting Ever since everything shut the hell down, March 2020. It's been a long time. Kelly O'Hara was on our very first show, and she's back again. Yes, she is. Where um, are we? we are, I'll tell you where we're at. We are um, getting really close no, to a million dollars. Oh, I thought you said, where are we? No, no, because no, oh, okay. oh, well, for those of you who don't know, Stars in the House is uh, a, a daily live stream that we do for the Actors Fund. And in fact, our friend Maggie at the Actors Fund sent some really great examples of what they do. Oh, with the Actors Fund, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and we'll read those in a few minutes. But um, we are, they are a human rights, or human services organization. Um, I moved your mic out of the way, Seth. Um, that is for professional artists all over the country. Um, in well, the, not just artists, professional, uh, professional anybody in the arts. Thank you, thank you. Yes, Profe you know what? We've been doing this for so long. It's like I can't believe I'm stumbling. And we're actually fully these. scripted. We have a teleprompter. No, we don't. No, we don't. If we did, it would be actually a little bit smoother. Um, anyway, um, yes, for for artists behind the scenes, um, in front of the scenes, everything else on theater, in theater, dance, um, opera, including performing arts centers like in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, which is where we uh, we had our show last night with uh, Kristen Chenoweth and her boot camp. Um, and uh, anyway, it's for it's for people around the country. If you need financial help, or if you're in need of workshops that they have, which they have amazing workshops, and we'll talk about those in a second. If you are if you need help, go to actressfund.org. If you can donate, because we are getting really close to a million dollars, go to starsinthehouse.com, or you can text fund twenty twenty to five six five one two. Well, it's important to donate tonight. Yeah, because we have another matching grant that's gonna help us get to that million dollars. We wanna thank the Angie Torres Charitable Fund for their match tonight. They're doing it tonight for up to $2,500. So let's get that $2,500 yeah. and make it 5,000. Let's get at least 5,500 because we've gotta get to a million by the end of the, uh, the month. That's right, We and, and we are up to $956,300 raised for the act. Fine. You. That's right. So uh, when you donate, don't forget to forward your receipt to donations at startsinthehouse.com and we will forward them to some of the stars tonight who will read them. Matt will literally read it fully in Italian because he is fluent. <laughs> Kelly will read it in Coloratura. <laughs> Vicky will read it in a very kind, motherly, southern fashion. Well, that's sort of true, though, about the Italian, right? Because when you it were is? texting uh, Kelly and yeah, Matt, Matt was and Vicky, he was responding in Italian, but I think it was a lot of Google Translate. We'll that's ask what I was him. Wondering. Okay, because I was oh. like, it's way too. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> yeah, Matt, I don't believe it. Okay, it was way too fluent. <laughs> Any to the who? All right, so we we want to thank the Angie Torres Charitable Fund for um for the match tonight. Thank you very much, David. Um, so let's let's make that happen. Um, I do want to read. We we've got a couple of uh client quotes um that I think would be really um telling of what the Actors Fund does. Um, the first one is from a client of the Phyllis Newman Women's Health Initiative. I started speaking with my Actors Fund social worker in March of 2020. I had just had cancer surgery and was in the middle of radiation therapy. Then COVID-19 took storm. I was an emotional mess and desperately needed support. I reached out to the Actors Fund and my social worker took my call with care, hmm. concern, healing, and kindness. I'm grateful for her support over these past months as she has been extremely helpful during a very dark time, time in my life. I'm very thankful to the care, for the care that the Actors Fund provides for the entertainment industry. And then another one from a grant recipient and a workshop attendee. 
I wanted to send a big thank you to the Actress Fund for everything you do. The emergency financial aid has been a blessing. The virtual workshops have been great. The scholarship for my teaching certi certification is a huge help. I love that. And most importantly, my career counselor has been amazing. I've had three sessions so far, and I'm so appreciative for her guidance and support. The world has been tough, so I can't thank your organization enough. Yeah, because it's kind of easy to just think of like generic people getting generic grants, but these are all uh, extremely specific, and that's the bravo. Exactly. Uh, I want to do more comic book housekeeping because we're delaying the beginning of the show because there's one comic that's not going to be over till eight ten. And Doctor Lapook um, isn't going to be with us tonight. Yeah, so. I know Doctor Lapook going to make it, so he's going to be here tomorrow. That's right. Um, but anyway, I am. Oh yeah, that's what I want to say. So tomorrow we have another reunion. Tonight is Latin Piazza. Tomorrow is Dream Girls. But it is the Dream Girls concert that I did for the Actress Fund in 2001, and it's going to have the Dreams. The Dreams are four people. It's you know Michelle, who is Tamara Tooney. It is Effie, who is Lilius White. It is Laurel Heather Headley, and it is Dina Audrey McDonald. Plus, we have Cece, uh, the nice brother, who's also a songwriter, Darius DeHaas, and we have Brenda Braxton, who co choreographed, co -choreographed and co-directed. So all that's going to be tomorrow, and the footage I have. Because I basically was filming every single rehearsal from the very, very first sing through. So I have amazing footage of everything. And you that had started showing. rehearsals early on. Way right? early. We began June, June 2001. And then the show was September. So I have so many rehearsals, run throughs, like tons of stuff. So that's going to be tomorrow. That's another match. But we'd love to make our match tonight and yes. then make another match tomorrow. That's right. Oh, and, and, uh, and we also want to remind you if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so um thank you david um oh, yeah go ahead sorry. yeah please i'm just gonna say subscribe and actually if you can do right now can you just copy and paste where we are right now and put it on your social media that way people can like actually watch along with you so just like copy it and be like oh my god the show's so great okay i feel we can call people out and then uh everyone will be here oh yeah look, so we have everybody yeah right? so here we go so first um she was in our very first stars in the house and now it's in our very last. What? No. Not the end one. Please welcome Miss Kelly O'Hara. Hi, Kels. Hi, Kelly. Hi, guys. Kelly, your background is stunning. Oh, it's just a little cheapy painting, but I like it. I like the colors. Yeah, it looks great. And let me now welcome your mother, Mother Dear, as we say. Um, please welcome Victoria Clark. Hello. Hi, Mother. Hi, Mother. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's so good to see you guys. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Vicky. Hi. Hi. We call each other Mother. <laughs> good enough for us. Hi. Oh, yeah. And now let me welcome your lover, Mr. <laughs> Matt Morrison or Matty Fresh. What work? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> You're a cool Hi. dude. Hi, Lover. Hello. Hey, Lover. Hey, mother-in-law. Hey. No, you're my lover. You. <laughs> no, Clara, never, Clara never knew. Clara never knew, but that's okay. That'll be our <laughs> Easy, easy. <laughs> With your hair up like that, Maddie, um, and it's a little darker, you look like Revel. Oh, do I? Oh, yes. Yeah. My I mean, he, he looks a lot like his gorgeous. You know, so, everyone's so well lit. I need to get in. My my Zoom game is just off. I'm sorry. You look great. Oh, no. You look amazing. I can't right. see everyone. I know. <laughs> it's fun. All right. We got, we got to talk about how this whole thing began because I was telling James, like, each one of you has a crazy how you got the role story, I feel. So why don't we first start with, with Matt Morrison, who is the opposite of a typical actor. When he was off at the audition, he was like, I do not want to do it. It's wrong. I'm not even going to show up. I'm not going. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I said that because I was I was scared, and I frankly I frankly thought they were um, mistaken to even attempt to audition me for this role. Um, but yeah, I just I just didn't feel like I didn't have I guess I had the confidence as a young actor. I was twenty four, I think, um, and I just didn't feel like I, I had the the chops to do this kind of role and. Luckily, I was I was wrong, and um, I, I I was so pushed by the entire creative team, especially by these two ladies right here. Um, it was a uh, the highlight of my career. I was gonna say one of the highlights of my career, but it was the highlight of my career. This show oh. is so special to me, um, and I my one regret from this show was that I moved too early. 
Oh, why did you leave? What came up? A play. I'm happy I did the play, but it, you know, it was, it was so wonderful to do a play and not have to sing this score every night. It was just like freedom, you know. <laughs> but uh, but at the end of the day, I just really my heart was in Florence, Italy. I think it's. I think you probably you and I probably agree. It's hard that we didn't get to put it on film with with Mother. You know, that's really hard for me that I'm not. Yes, yeah, yeah. That one stings a little bit. We both left. Matt, I, Matt, what was the what what ended up being the most challenging part of the role for you or the show? I mean, take your pick. <laughs> uh, speak, learning learning Italian. Um, I, I do not speak Italian. Um, I, I it was interesting because that was the hardest. The, the Italian was the hardest part, but then obviously the music. I, I didn't really have that the vocal stylings of the more operatic um, sounds. But for me, I think the biggest challenge was also conveying to an audience what I'm trying to say when I can't, when 97% of the audience doesn't speak Italian. So <laughs> the physicality of the role was really important to me to kind of nail. But it's funny, I, that was so important, but I was really trying to impress the 3% that could speak Italian. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And Kelly, a lot of people don't know, but you began as Franca, the dark haired already. Like it's, I wish I'd never seen a picture of you. I'd love to see a picture of you as Franca. Oh, there's, the dark there's one floating around uh, where I'm standing with Celia in Seattle and I look like I'm going to eat her. Like I'm so intense and she's so sweet in front of me and I'm holding her from behind during the, um, <laughs> the, the joy you feel that song. But yeah, I'll, I'll send that picture to you. <laughs> um, no, I, I was elated. I got put in the workshop in Sundance. The very first one it was like half a musical, not much of the music. And, um, I had been there to do another, this John Kelly, uh, weird, I was on roller skates or something with grapes on my head. And it was about, uh, children of paradise. And it was, uh, radio head music. It was crazy. I was there to do that. And I think they just needed another singer. And Ted Sperling said, I think she can, just read this role. And mm -hmm. I loved it. I fell in love with this sort of, sort of sassy Sophia Loren thing, and which I think led me to Francesca Johnson at some point. Um, <laughs> but, um, but so nothing's an accident and, and it's all meaningful. But yeah, the, then then we did it in Seattle and we did it in Chicago. And, and then by the time Broadway, it switched to Clara. And so I feel like I've got my my bones and my heart are all through that that piece. Oh, you were there so early on. So people don't know. So Sue Kina Bolger was playing mm -hmm. uh, originally Clara, and they really, her character, you find out, is much older than she is. And she's, you know, to this day looks around 11. She's literally playing Scout and she's playing Mockingbird. <laughs> so basically, they were like, peace out. We want someone who looks a little bit older. And then they were like, Kelly, will you move roles? And of course, Kelly was like, I love Franca too much and I love Celia. I refuse to move. And they were like, Celia's still not doing it anyway. So whether or not you audition it, you know, it's still not, it's still not going to be with Celia. So you might as well audition. But it must be very weird to, Kind of create one role and then be watching the role you created while you're like isn't that bizarre like um sideshow style yeah i mean no it, it was it was weird but i mean um and we'll talk to her later but there was no question when our new franca walked in the door that it was hot and awesome and it was going to be totally different and fantastic so that was gone i think the original mm -hmm. yes the original switch over we've talked about this ad nauseum now but vicky and i uh, were so intent on um the role I, I've made the mistake of calling the role Celia instead of Clara. I mean, that's how much it's in my bones. We really loved Celia in this role. And yes, when it was apparent that she uh, wasn't going to be doing it, then we wanted to keep it in the family. And I was so proud to get to play Clara, believe me. But it it, um, it, it was a, fun, a funny place because it really never belonged to me. So I was sort of in the middle mm -hmm. because I wasn't playing Franca and I wasn't really owning Clara for a long time. Um, I really do now. I really embrace it and love it so much. But at the time I was so angsty and I didn't a lot. So I did, I sort of, and I had asked Adam to write all these, you know, these high notes for Franca, like put an F and if, you know, um, in uh, a you to me. It, do it for me. And I was doing all these fun things, which then didn't happen as Clara. So I thought, oh, I missed that, you know, <laughs> but uh, it all turned out and I'm, I'm grateful for every, every second. And like I said, I don't think there are any accidents. Boy, I'm obsessed with that high F. And Vicki Clark, you're a great testament to uh, going for what you want for performers out there. Talk about how you sort of uh, really commandeered the role. Well, um, I think Ted had came back from Sundance or right right before he went to Sundance and 
Adam had a, a draft of Fable, and he said, "I gotta, I gotta play this song for you. You've got to come to some dance." And he came over and he he played it, and something kind of went through my body, and I felt like I knew where the tune was gonna go, which is weird because it's not a predictable melody. And I I felt like I'd heard it before, that I'd always known it. It's just one of those really mysterious things about this music and this part. I felt like I had knew her and and it was visceral, you know, in a way that I don't think I've ever felt with any other part. And I recognized it. I, I was old enough to know that this, you know, was an unusual experience. And so I called up Adam right away and said, you know, we're colleagues and friends and I had been a Floyd Collins groupie. So I said, hey, now listen, Adam, I want a shot at this part. And he said, forget it, you're way too young. You know, she's got to believably be the mother of a 26 year old. And I was like, dude, I'm so old. I'm old enough to play this part. And he goes, no, no. And then I just, I, and then we hung up and I was despondent and I left him a message that said, you know, this is why God invented wigs. And I really, I just, I just, you know, then they, they said, okay, come to Sundance and I wasn't available. Or maybe no, I can't remember. I don't think I don't think they asked me to come to Sundance. Forget that. It was Mary. It was Mary Claire Heron, and she was an alto. She was a mezzo, and Adam had sort of envisioned it more as a soprano role. That's what it was. And so that's that's when they came knocking on my door, uh, you know, soprano. And then I um and uh, yeah, I was put through my paces. I had to do two or three auditions. And, well, talk about the final audition because they'd only known you. You know, she was Smitty and had to succeed in Titanic. The gossipy, you know, second-class citizens. So talk about when they were like, girl, you got to bring it. Yeah, they. I don't think anyone knew the more serious side of me. I mean, they knew the clown who in, eventually very much came to the party in, in Piazza. <laughs> Sorry, snort, involuntary snorting. <laughs> but, you know, I'm laughing because I'm looking at my co co-stars and you guys know what a complete you know nim skull i am back num skull whatever that word is i just i'm <laughs> such a cut up yeah. no ma'am no ma'am no ma'am what honey no ma'am no ma'am <laughs> and that's how that's how kelly got her nickname because she was the grown-up in the relationship would always try to calm me down all the time so i started calling her mother because she ended up you know like taking care of me most of the time but i you know, most people only know the clown in me. And so now, of course, people think I'm this like dramatic actress and I'm not, I never get cast as anything funny now because no one, you know, anyway. So uh, I digress. I don't know. What am I saying? I, I you know, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. Craig Lucas called me up on Thanksgiving morning and said, um, it's Craig Lucas. And I thought it, you know, it was one of my pally pals. Uh, you know, I don't know, making fun or just, I said, come on, who is it? And so he finally convinced me it was Craig. And he said, you know, you've got to like, you've got to ground yourself a little bit more. Like we have to really see, you can't fool around in these auditions. We really, we need to see what you're going to do. And I was like, I was. And he's like, no, they <laughs> just don't believe that you're not, you know, like we need to see it. I was like, okay. And he goes, I'm pulling for you. Just, yeah, please. So oh, that's nice. Yeah. So it really was Craig calling me, you know, during the Macy's Thanksgiving Day parade. And, um, you know, I guess, um, I mean, I guess they saw that I had it. And I, I'm very, very grateful. I mean, changed my life forever and ever. And I got to meet these two wonderful people who broke my heart every night. And it was the best thing, really, that ever happened to me. Uh, I'm going to have Kelly be donations, but before we do, here's the song that Vicky first heard, which she thought she had heard before. Just a smattering of it. If you find in the world, in the wide, wide world, that someone sees, that someone knows you, oh, oh. Clara, look 
when you looked through the gray at me, I couldn't. <laughs> I it's like that. I can tell that's from early in previews that footage yeah. or that it's press footage because um, I was just sobbing through the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. I want to know if any of you went to Italy to do um, some research. That's what I want to know. Or at least Mama Leone's. Anybody? <laughs> Nobody. Wait, Vicky, you did? Does that mean twice or just hello? No, I I, I don't know. Peace and yes, I went. <laughs> I went and I and Ted went and I, I we took some good friends from our family and my son and his best friend and his best friend's family went and my mom and her second husband went and my brother and Peter Cello, Peter Sacken King. Yeah. Wait a minute, Vicky, all before all before Broadway? Yes. And what did you learn? What was it like were uh I'm sure, yeah, tell us. Well, first of all, you can write the whole trip off, you know. And then, <laughs> you know, we went to the Duomo. We went to all the places in the show. And wow. I just wanted to experience it because Margaret's going back, you know, from her honeymoon. And so I wanted it to feel like I remembered it, you know, and I'd never been there before. So I wanted to oh. I wanted to be able to really remember what those places look like um, that are mentioned in the show, the very specific places. Yeah. What happened here? Oh, I love that. Tell him, Harry, can you please read some donations, dear? Because yeah. that's what's happening here. Yes. Um, right Piazza has been such a special show for me for so long, and it seems fitting to donate tonight to celebrate the fact that today I finally booked my first in-person theater tickets to see another show that I and my Spotify algorithms associate with Kelly O'Hara. When I see South Pacific in July at the Chis uh, Chichester Festival Theater here in the UK, it will have been 497 days since I set foot in a theater, and I can't wait. I've also donated a matching amount to the UK Theater Support Fund to support our actors over here. Thanks all at Sith for keeping us going over the past 15 months, and to all performers, writers, and theater makers who've found creative ways to keep us entertained in the most difficult of circumstances. It's more appreciated than you'll ever know. Joe in Manchester, $25. James and Seth, Light in the Piazza is one of my favorite shows because of the beautiful music by Adam Gettle, but because of the amazing acting and singing from this perfect cast. I am an NC native and love the reference to my homeland. Thank you, Kel uh, Victoria, Kelly, Matthew, Michael, and the incredible stars for making me to taking me to Italy and moving me emotionally with this story. Philip from in, uh, North Carolina, $250. Grateful for the incredible talent that Seth and James have shared over the last year plus. Happy to report this is my 80th donation to Stars in the House. Mark from May Massachusetts, $50 and one more. You guys are so wonderful, keeping us going in these hard times and bringing Broadway into our homes. Piazza is one of our very favorite shows and we saw it several times. We make this donation in memory of my husband, Bob, who was one of the biggest Broadway fans. Love you guys so much for doing this for us. Kathy Mervine, $50. Oh, wow. Also great. great. And boy, we love Mark. 80 donations. Holy cow. When Julie was, uh, she did our, our haircuts a little while ago and uh, did Seth first. And and then during mine, I played Light in the Piazza. And I was like, Julie, do you remember this? And she was like, yes, you played it every day because we were living in Texas at the time. So I had, I had Julie, it was Julie's first Broadway show. And I know I've seen this, I've shown this before, but this is Vicky and me and Julie at the stage door. Oh yes, this Light in the Piazza was her first Broadway show. Oh. And I said, I said, I said, because that's what I said. I said, you don't remember it. And she said, yeah, you played it every day. And I said, you, you I said, really? Because, you know, it, it she really remembers at five. And she said, yes, you played that and Rent. And I was like, oh, she's she is remembering, right? Because it was the year that Rent, the movie came out. And I had oh, those cool. CDs in my car. It was like the Rent from the movie and Light in the Piazza. So I was like, wow, that kid does know the music. Wow. So, um, so yes, Wait, so yeah. thank you for I know the first. contrast. I know the contrast, right. Well, you know, wanted to balance out her musical yeah. theater, you know, experience. Mm -hmm. So, but, but it was, it, for me listening to it in the car and driving in texas because vicky we're both from dallas mm -hmm. um and driving it around and it was just it filled me with joy and happiness and it was amazing because i had not seen the broadway show yet how much with the little bit of dialogue and the way it was produced it was just amazing i was able to i followed the whole story and so when i saw it on broadway finally it was like oh this is exactly what i hoped it would be so um anyway but i wanted to ask um did you, because it does cover a lot of, covers love, different generations of love, 
And it also obviously covers a mother daughter relationship and a daughter with special needs. Why don't you describe what the plot is a little bit before? Yes. Yeah, so, well, 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 Vicky, you want to explain the plot? Cause maybe not everyone watching knows before I ask my question. Well, we are, we are, sort of, we are, yeah, good luck. It's, we are sort of like this cultish. I mean, the people that love Adam Gettle and, and, and love Craig Lucas and, Bartlett Shear, who was our wonderful director, and Johnny Butterell, who did our musical staging. Like, we are sort of rather cultish about this show and was very important to us. And we were really, we were a family, as Kelly said. So it's a story about two families. It's um, a woman um, who, had, who travels to Italy with her daughter. Um, and they're from North, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And almost immediately, her daughter gets a crush on this Italian boy. Uh, you have this young man, and the, man, the young man that Matthew played named Fabrizio is quite persistent and starts following them around. And it turns out that they just have this instant chemistry, this instant, instant attraction. And before you know it, um, we start meeting members of his family and we start getting sort of pulled into their whole culture. And Margaret calls home to her husband and says, something's cooking here and and she she's trying to get out what's going on and meanwhile um the mother margaret is is talking to the audience throughout the show she breaks the fourth wall and she's saying i know she's beautiful she's an amazing yes she is amazing there's a little thing i i'll tell you later and then she and then you get you go back into the story so mm -hmm. there are these hints that keep getting dropped about how there's something a little different about about this family, but you don't know exactly what it is. So you find out as the Italian family finds out that as they're falling in love, um, that Claire was had an accident when she was um, 12 and she has a, trauma, a traumatic brain injury um, and she's not able to really progress sort of intellectually past a certain age. And so because of the language barrier, uh, in the, with the Italians and the Americans, the Italians don't really pick up on it. And so Margaret mm -hmm. has this decision. Um, is she going to allow her daughter to fulfill this, this, this once in a lifetime love, or is she going to try to explain to these, these Italians that her daughter is handicapped in some way? And she just, and she doesn't decide until very like almost the last minute. And and actually Clara, um, Kelly's character says, I'm doing this with or without you. Mm -hmm. And so actually she breaks the pattern. And I think Clara, Kelly could probably speak about this more eloquently, but Clara surprises everybody, but her mother most of all, because um, her mother tries to drag her away from Florence and, and leave the whole thing. Um, behind and Clara says, well, I'm going back to Florence. I don't need you. I know how to get money. I know I just, I can take care of myself. I don't need you. And so, um, Margaret goes, Oh, if I still want this woman in my, this young woman in my life, I'm going to have to get on her, the Clara train, the Clara mm -hmm. Fabrizio train. And so she eventually, um, allows it to go forward without telling the husband. She makes a decision not to tell the husband back in the U.S. because she knows he's going to blow it, and that he's going to he's going to get on a plane and stop the whole thing. And so she calls him at the last second because she has this thing about not wanting to lie. And so at the last second, when he can't interfere, even if he got on a plane the next day, the marriage would be over. So she she like times it perfectly so that it can proceed. And so it's a, it's a really interesting story. Did I tell it? Did I tell it right, guys? That was so that was well great. done. My God, no wonder you went to Yale. <laughs> Marty well, Pants. That's from my point of view. Now, if Fabrizio told the story, he would tell it from his point of view. So, but that's that's sort of the story I was telling. A meddling mother-in-law gets in my way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh no! I the thing I love about this show. The, James, what you were saying about the music and stuff, for me, every time I heard the first harp, that was the first thing we heard in the show was the harp and it set up the overture. And I got so excited for the audience. Yeah. Because I knew we were gonna take them to transport them to a, a different world. And, you know, I think we've all been a part of shows where sometimes you're like, oh, you try to lie to yourself, but maybe like, Two people will get it, get what we're yeah. trying to do. 
yeah. Yeah. So, but that was one of those you just can kind of just it was it was out of your hands in the most beautiful way you know you mm. just let the let the work speak for itself um and the show was as close to flawless i think as as a show could be you know light in the piazza is one of those shows that you hear a person saying um I had brain surgery and I listened, we put it in my ear in the hospital and that's how I got through my recovery or something like that. You know, you get those gifts. And when, when you start to get that kind of thing in your life, you you realize how much more important these things are than um, there's there's purpose in them, you know? That's, that's, uh, that's what this show is for me. It, it seems to have touched people in different sorts of ways that are bigger than, you know, a Broadway show or something. What what were some memorable moments at the stage door? Because I'm sure because of everything that this touched on, in addition to its beauty, but also the relationships, were there certain moments at the stage door of, of audience members that they shared with you their own experiences? Vicky? Miss Vicky? I, I just remember, <clears throat> I don't know if y'all remember, but they'd have to clear the house. Like people couldn't get up at the end of the show. People would be in their seats just because it ends kind of un, it has kind of a surprising ending yeah you know it ends with them just starting to walk down the aisle and then margaret goes oh there's a fable there's a, i can't even go into fable but there's a big song and then boom it's over and so people were people were literally not ready for it to be over and people were crying and the ushers had to like pick them up and you know kind of like get them like a, and and then that's kind of what we saw at the stage door too is just people still um, processing. Yes. Thank you. Processing. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I did, I would get letters. Um, I got a few letters. I know that it's, it, it's somewhat controversial to play and this, especially now we can talk about this more, um, to have different capabilities and to play a person like that and what that means. And, um, but I certainly at that time got some very positive letters, which meant a lot to me because I think I tried so hard to study someone with a, a, a a brain injury and what that would be. And, and, and maybe I overthought it a little, but at the same time, I wanted to give it honor and, and, re, you know, and reality and stuff. And, and I did have um, more than a couple of times have a mother write and say, mm -hmm. you know, um, this, this gave me so much, you know, my daughter is this, and, and this gave me so much hope, or I have, seen, we watched Piazza together and this has taught, given us both, you know, this, this conversation that we've now had, all sorts of things, which I think yeah. that's the reason for all of this. It, you know, it, it makes, we're like vessels for, for feelings that, that wake up certain things in other people. And that's, um, that was important to me too. Wow. There's so much joy and brightness. And listen to this title song. It's just so open and, and it really is light. You sang that in New York City. Um, I know that wasn't some sort of, uh, yeah, that wasn't on the stage. That was for a televised thing. But, yeah. you know, you just, I was, the vocal for person to me was like, where's that O vowel on Fabrizio? But then I remember I had a Southern accent. Fabrizio! <laughs> <laughs> I, speaking of which, Vicki, talk about that. I love what how you had your friend go to the script. Oh, <laughs> I I wanted the I wanted the dialect to be really specific, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to coach it with a dialect coach because I knew they were kind of going to try to make it all by the book. Uh -huh. So I had a Thomas Luke, my son, went to school with um, a, a little boy, and his mom. I loved her accent. It was she was raised in I believe she was raised in Virginia, and then she moved to North Carolina, and then she had a little Tennessee in there. And I literally just put the script in front of her and gave her a tape and said, just read these lines. I just want to hear. And a lot of a lot of the musical inflection that I ended up using in the show was just the way Marie would say it. Wow. And yeah. 
you know, I have I have a lot of relatives in Winston Salem, and you you were unbelievably spot on. Really, <laughs> no, no, you know, little little things. Really, really great. I just love that, um, Matt. I want to show some of your uh, your love song. I just realized, like, you guys then did South Pacific, so you were like boyfriend girlfriend in line the piazza, but then like, don't even get me started on this. Uh, <laughs> don't even get me started. I've never had so much jealousy and rage. Um, no, but honestly, it was it was a really hard transition going into South Pacific after this because Kelly was my girl. Like we had this soul connection, just like. I love this woman so much. And then all of a sudden, this hot, awesome, amazing Brazilian guy comes in and you know steps in and now he now now she's his. So I I it was it was a struggle, honestly. Sorry about it. Sorry. <laughs> and you know, Paulo was ballet trained, Matt, and I know you're more of a hip hop dancer. Pretty much. Pretty I'm much. just saying, I think he had a leg up, literally. You know, Here's a oh, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, you know what's great about Paolo that is so funny about that story is that he would walk out onto the stage and he loves, I tell the story in front of everybody in front of Paolo, so he loves the story too. But he'd walk out and he'd be like, Nelly. And all the women would go, swoon. The whole audience would go, like, ooh. And then off stage, he'd be, I'd be across before the bows and off stage, he'd be going, Nelita Corison, Nelita Corison. And he'd be doing ballet and kicking and like, you know, tour jetés. And I'd be like, the ladies. If they saw you, they would be so confused. <laughs> he is adorable. He's adorable. Um, all right, I want to bring up the temperature of this show. Let's make it PG-13. Whoa. I had to cut it off. It's it's a family show. I literally had to cut off the clip. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you, don't, you don't want to know what happened after that. <laughs> but let's oh, talk Mom diet. That's what happened. That's what right. happened. Mom walked in. Mom I had a great in. view of the whole thing. <laughs> the best ending to an act. It was so, oh. it was so stunning. <laughs> that's what it sounded like um matt let's talk diet what were you eating during that time period were you like so young that you're like whatever man or are you just like only chicken breast and water no the chicken breast and water well water <laughs> that, that blows you don't want to do water so um but it was honestly uh that was more south pacific because i had to do an entire number with right. my shirt off um, yeah. but this was, this was, I think just young age and I don't know. It, I was more about my voice in that, that show than anything. My stage door experience was going out and just doing a couple, I, I would speak Italian to, to the people, to the people. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, but I was basically, I lived like a nun that whole show. I, I, I lost a lot of friends cause I didn't really speak to people because I was just on vocal rest my entire, my entire time in the show. On a total side note, Elaine Page, that's why she has a bad reputation because she was in the ensemble of Jesus Christ Superstar and then she got a Vita and during a Vita, she was like, I can't go out after the show. And they're like, she's a snob. And that's they all thought about me too. I, I know. It's just called like, I'm belting. Um, listen, we got to take a five minute Sarah you're already buried because she's at her daughter's graduation. She's on an iPhone. It's crazy looking, but I wanted to just bring her on to say hello. One, two, three, Sarah Barry. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, you guys. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> I'm, I'm hiding in the car in, in a parking lot at the stadium. <laughs> you're, I, I'm so, I'm so, your daughter is graduating. I can't believe That's it. That's insane. I know. I was telling Seth how when she was two, she went trick-or-treating backstage to all the dressing rooms. And, <laughs> and the hair department made her a wig, a mermaid wig. Like the best because oh. she wanted to be a mermaid. And remember Alicia, the hair lady? Oh, yes. She's like, oh, Sarah, I will make you the hair wig. And um, so she and 
yeah, and now she's graduating and she's she's coming back to New York. She's going to NYU. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Sarah, I have a couple of clips picked before you go. I just want to give everyone a taste of you. But I will just say, this is the high note that Kelly added that Sarah gets to sing in the album. Listen how crazy amazing it is. Unbelievable. <laughs> okay, hold on. Two things. A, I'm bringing on your husband. Buonasera. Oh, no, she Buonasera. <laughs> and of course, oh, we're Giuseppe. I'm going to bring in a mamacita. <laughs> oh, the family. Oh. Oh. Yay. 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 Oh, Buonasera. God, everybody Mom. looks so good. You Michael Ress was her boyfriend. Hi, everybody. And in, wow. case people, in case people think that Sarah marked it on okay. stage, Sarah, here you are not marking it on stage. <laughs> wow. And Patty's Patty's flawless high C every I night. Was, I, I couldn't hear it. <laughs> no. it was so good. Speaking oh. of vocal rest. Oh. Holy cow, that's good. Um, so, help me. Help me. So. Who's saying so, Sarah? Okay. I can't tell. I, I'm a little late coming in. Are we supposed to... Oh, Sarah, I'm talking. Yes. <laughs> am I, is my, am I not, am I not on? No, we can on. Hear you. You have a wonderful delay. Okay, go. Oh, okay. So I was just going to say when I auditioned for the light in the piazza, is it working? Is it working? Yes. Um, they asked if I had a high. Okay, they asked if I had a high E, and I was like, Yeah, I have a high E, of course. And then when we started rehearsal, we had a table read. And, and we were reading through the music and I, I was reading ahead and I was like, wait, that's not an E, that's, a, that's an F coming up. That's an F coming up. What are we gonna do, shit? And so, <laughs> so Bart was like, well, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So then Bart said, well, we'll just have Kelly sing your part in this at the table read. So she's gonna do Clara and Franca. And I was like, oh, oh no. And I was, I was like embarrassed and devastated. And Kelly's like, it's all good. So she sang it. And I ran screaming to my voice teacher after rehearsal that day, Marnie Nixon. I said, sweet baby Jesus, I need an F pronto. So she <laughs> gave me all these, she gave me all these exercises and started working with me. I'm like, that can't happen again. So, and so like in about a week, she, I, I had an F, but oh my God, that was terrifying. <laughs> oh my God. I don't, even, did I, do, I don't remember that. Did I do that? You you did. You did. Boo. Like, boo. Yes. boo. <laughs> but, uh, well, I think they pressured you. They're like, Kelly, just do it. Just do it. And you were so, you're like, uh, oh, oh, it's okay. Okay. You were, you were so sweet. Okay. Um, yeah. okay. But yes, no, you were, you were the night, you were my friend. <laughs> Bart was not my friend. Yeah, but uh, there's nothing uh, the difference between uh, me and an F. <laughs> Sarah's too much. Hey, Sarah, before you go back to graduation, I just want to tell everybody, I was shocked about Sarah's high F because I knew her as a belter because we did Les Mis together and she was Eponine. And I actually found one moment of you in Piazza belting. Listen how high and pingy this is. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your five minute call. Five minutes until the top of act two. Five minutes, please. Five. Cutting! <laughs> <laughs> what a comedy. All right, Sarah, bye. Say hi to Michael. We love him. Bye. Hi, hi, hi. So good to see you. So glamorous. Guys, it looks like Franca. You know the reason why nobody was looking at my body? Did you see Michael Barres's guns in that show? Uh oh. Oh my gosh! In those tight oh, yeah. shirts, chest, and just so just beautiful. Days of like, Maddie, Maddie, I was looking at your chest. So. <laughs> 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 FYI. So Barres, we were talking about how everyone got their roles. I knew Michael from 
uh, Forever Plaid is really kind of like a crooner. How did you wind up being this Italian sex pot? <laughs> My audition for this show, um, I didn't have anything to do with the show out of town, in Taman or Chicago. And I came in to audition for it in the city. And I was like, what the hell? I had just done this really weird thing down at New York Theater Workshop where I spoke like as in Sicilian, it's a dead language. And I was like, just do something weird. So I sang a cappella, a Sicilian lullaby that I thought was really beautiful and very simple. And Adam Gettle got up and was like, I just see the bombs going off and like the, <laughs> the, the village crumbling. And I was like, uh, oh, okay, that wasn't really at all what I was seeing in my head, but if it worked for you and it gets me the job, I'm exactly. good with it. Um, yeah, that was it. And I spoke, I never spoke English in the show. So it turned out to be a good thing that wow. um, I sang Italian for the audition. And was it one of those, like the way that Matt got to go into a play after doing this heavy sing, was it easy for you to go into Light in the Piazza and not have to do a full split chest of the floor? Yes. Oh. Yes. I just have to say, first of all, all of you, I can't tell you, Seth, how nice it is to see these people's faces. No. Oh. I, I know that they were saying this earlier, but I want a chance to say it too. This was one of the most magical things I've ever done in my life, professionally or personally. It's like everything just came together in such a perfect, perfect way. And I think it was Vicky, actually, you said this to me once. It was like, no matter what was happening on stage, you could look anywhere at anybody at any time and the world was perfect. It was just, it was whole and it was perfect and you never ever got pulled out ever. And you were so happy to be there. It was really my favorite thing I've ever done as a performer on Broadway or anywhere, really. It was oh, wow. You sound like Maddie, I love it. And Patty Cohenauer, you come from the world of Christine Daae and Rosebud and then this Italian woman who out of the blue speaks English. How'd you get the gig? Okay, well, you know, I was living in Seattle for quite a long time, actually, Gig Harbor. Um, and I had done some plays for Bart because he was the director at the Intuan Theater. And it was notorious for calling me for parts that I just didn't see I was right for. But this was to beat all because it was like, Kate, the casting director, she's, you know, she's very British. And she says, Pat, we'd like to bring you in for an Italian signora. And I was like, right. And fax and fax machines and they faxed me IU to me as a monologue and I knew that Craig being a remarkable playwright I didn't want to like suck and I had to figure out like an Italian dialect and kind of just do this monologue I had no idea it was a musical I went in mm -hmm. and there was Craig and Bart and I did the monologue and they laughed and everything was great and they asked me to sing a, a little song it's just a cappella and that was it. And they thanked me and I left. And then I get this phone call that they are gonna do a reading in New York and they want me to do the Senora, the reading. And so I went to New York and it was at Adam's, this loft space. So at this and, point, you know it's a musical. Yeah, okay. because they sent, but I didn't have any of the music. I mean, they said oh. uh, they had a, a cassette tape of Adam doing some of them songs, no. but I, I, didn't, I didn't know. I mean, anyway, so I, I get there and mm -hmm. I have my first rehearsal with Ted and he hands me a you to me. And um, I had what, like 24 hours to figure it out and, you know, sight read it on a music stand, but it was just like, oh, just shoot me dead. Just shoot me dead. <laughs> I why? never learned this. It was so, so hard. Hard. I mean, yeah. Maddie, Michael, you know, I mean, it was all over the place. And it's very, very difficult to be right in the center of each note. And Adam's mm -hmm. scores demand that you be in the center of his pieces. Mm -hmm. they, they, musically, it's just and it, because it makes it even more brilliant than it already is. So I had to get it right. <laughs> but my favorite moment was I got to that part where, you know, I, um, I, to me means help me in Italian. Um, I don't speak English, but I have to tell you what's going on. And at the reading, when I did that, the, the whole room just fell apart. So I went, cool, I'm gonna get a laugh. <laughs> and I'm gonna get, it's like, it was worth IU to me because it was such a remarkably difficult piece to do. Um, and by the way, you nailed it. IU to me means help me in Italian. 
I don't speak English, but I have to tell you what's going on. <laughs> Fabrizio, he thinks he wants to die. He thinks he ruined everything. His father says that this will pass. Giuseppe asks, was she as sweet as she looks? And Franca also wants to know in her own special way. <laughs> Here is what I know, what I do. I let them boil and simmer and stew, and I don't reveal myself. If there are suspicions, I encourage them. If there are rages, I say louder, please, louder. Oh, yes. Daddy. Woo. That darn thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it was everything about it. So after that reading, I remember walking up to, to Bart and saying that this was a jewel that was in a Tiffany box wrapped with a beautiful ribbon. Mm. And that whatever they decided to do as it moved forward, that mm. I knew they were going to take good care of it. Wow. And, it, and ending up at Lincoln Center, which was a remarkable for all of us, and they took such good care. It was just everything about it. I'm with you, Michael, on it. It, it probably the most extraordinary experience for all of us on Broadway. Wow. 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 Hey, Vicki, do you remember what you gave us for opening night? I, it was different things for different people. I think I gave the guys Italian ties. Did I give you a tie? <laughs> If I didn't, I'm in trouble. You, I, I was thinking something else that you gave us. There was a yep. little, it was a little teeny tiny, like three plant. leaf. A plant. He's got it. <laughs> oh. oh, you know what? I, I gave everybody that the day we moved into the theater because mm -hmm. we didn't have any windows and I bought everybody little right. teeny tiny plants because I thought we needed something living in the dressing room. So I bought everybody little plants. <laughs> so that was from the first day. That was our moving in present. 16, uh -huh. 16 years later, it's a lot wow. Oh my there gosh. Wow. I really also great. wanted to say Patty had the hardest job in the show because not only did she have to do that seven nights a week, she had to go on for Margaret once a week. And she had that split personality. She had to be the Italian mother and then she had to be <laughs> the American mother. And Patty, you, you're, you're just an incredible rock in the company and the show to lead the company both in both roles and and without you i wouldn't have been able to do the show because i just after a while i couldn't do it eight shows a week anymore i was just no. too exhausted and so thanks that, to you, oh, you oh, sweetie thank you kept the show vibrant and vital and you, you oh no so it's absolutely true patty it's true thanks vicky thank man, you man that's sweetie. hard to go on once a week um, hey, Matt Morrison, would you read some donations? Because tonight we've got a matching donation, so we want to get up to at least 2500 so we get 5000 for the night. That's right. So yes. we, and we want to thank the Andrew Torres Charitable Fund for the match tonight. Once again. Yes, once again. Love the light in the piazza. Thank you. Glad to see Matthew's hair has grown. He had a buzz cut last time I saw him. It was awful. No, it didn't say that. <laughs> um, Carol from California, $50. I was so lucky to score $20 student tickets to the opening night of Light in the Piazza on Broadway. And I knew from the first harpless that I was going to really like what I was about to see and hear. And I fell so madly in love with that show that I saw it 12 times total on Broadway. As well as the 2016 con reunion concert, which we have talked about that. Um, I've been going to theater for over 20 years, and Piazza is hands down the most beautiful and profound staging of any I've ever seen. Thank you mm. for the most cherished memories. Kevin from New York, $50. Uh, hello, Piazza Stars. I love you all, and the show is an all-time favorite. Kelly O'Hara, you are my own personal Broadway diva, and I adore you. Soprano obsessed. Uh, um, thank you all, Seth, James, Matthew, Kelly, Victoria, everyone. Thank you for doing this for the Actors Fund. James Lynch, $25. A million thank yous, James to Seth. Grazie mille for uh, your tireless work for the Actors Fund. And thank you for this incredible cast for bringing mm -hmm. it to life. Best to you all. JP Stevenson, $250. Wow. wow. And listen to this. I just got a text from Maggie at the Actors Fund. Um, we don't normally get 
uh, these sort of updates, but this is a special night, and we want to thank the Angie Torres. So we are up to $1,925 raised, which double that. So that means we're up, up to almost $4,000 raised tonight for the Actors Fund. Yay. Yes, Yay. In the Piazza. And listen, if you keep donating, we're going to have some live singing later. So I would really bring up the bucks because I'm going to have some of these clowns haul out yes. a song. Um, Matt Morrison, let me ask you, did you enjoy rehearsing like the Piazza? I was young and I needed the money. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I did. I mean, rehearsal in general is always my favorite place. I love the rehearsal room. I love developing, especially new works. Um, and right before the Light Piazza was Hairspray, which was kind of the show that put me on the map. And so this was the show that kind of stamped my my place, I think, on Broadway as, as a leading man. Mm. And and for me, it was just so special. But I think, the obviously, my relationship with Kelly and the show was was so profound. But right, right next to that is the Nacarelli family. I mean, that was, I, I still, I don't speak to these people as much as I should. I always think of them. Um, but I, um, I, they were my family and they are my family forever. But I, I absolutely loved the rehearsal process. And it was, it was amazing seeing Bart put this thing together. Uh, he, uh, he's, he's the top, you know, one of the top directors out there. And I think uh, this was his, his kind of entrance into the whole Broadway scene. So it was, uh, it was amazing to see um, quite, a, quite a debut from him. Such a profound answer. I was really just asking it to set you up. <laughs> Gettle even made him a roadmap for his opening song. Adam is a genius. I, I feel like this is his character. That I think that's why he's put so much attention on me and we rehearse all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Really? <laughs> Okay, next question. Um, <laughs> Vicky Clark, I want to play some of your song Dividing Day, which is such a fascinating term. And it reminds me sort of like Heather Headley, like it's easy as life. I'm like, is that an expression I've just never heard of? So like, is Dividing Day just like a term that anyone's ever said before? Or was it created for this show? I think it was this, but but it, she says it in such a way that it feels like, you know, she's coming up with it on the, in the moment, but it feels like, you're right. It feels like something we should all be thinking about. It's the moment like between like when you're in love and then like your acquaintances, <laughs> good friends. It's devastating. Uh, by the way, Bo really wanted to be here tonight, but he's driving across country. Uh, he sent the sweetest, sweetest, sweetest email, but he couldn't be here. But I'll show your devastation about your bad marriage. Take a gander. Beautiful is what you are, only somehow wearing a frightening disguise. I can see the winter in your eyes now, telling me, thank you, we're done here, not much to say, we are together, but I have had dividing day. So when, when was this day? Was it on the church step? Suddenly you're out of love. Does it go creeping slowly? When was your dividing day? Mm. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, so, so beautiful. Too much. It's too much. <laughs> I think Dividing Day was the first piece from this entire show that I ever heard. And it was, it was uh, a, 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 a Adam on a guitar, and he would go, and then he'd go, remember that one? And I, oh, I was just madly in love. And and then when you put the heart in it, like sort of that, that her face just then when she's like, it's just that realization, like flat. And it just. Kelly, I mean, Patty, I don't know if it, that song is still in your bones, but it's still in my bones. Mm -hmm. Because 
the, the cigarette, you had, there was a certain number of beats to, to smoke the cigarette, put it out, walk around the table. Wow. And I remember Jonathan Schwartz asked me to sing it on his radio show. And with, remember that Kelly, you were with me. And I, without the, without the telephone and the cigarette, I couldn't remember. The <laughs> and I, as usual, when Kelly is there, I just kind of looked at her and I went, and when she started singing the song. I was like, right, I know. <laughs> and I sang, like, I sang like four or five phrases and then I went up again and I was like, Kelly, you know, Kelly like, it's me. It's like, yeah, like, it's my mother in the show. Like I would just, and you know, and this, this is a terrible, terrible story, but I have to tell this really fast. When, when Katie Clark replaced you, I know, have I told you this all? Okay, well, you well, some of you were there. Um, before the beauty is, uh, Kelly used to embrace me and do this weird physical thing and it was a visceral thing and then, and then I said something to her and then I ran off and then she sang the beauty is. And Katie, of course, had her own things that she wanted to do and this was like her second performance and she didn't hold me and she didn't grab me and I couldn't remember what else happened in the scene. That was so, I didn't realize that physical trigger was what I needed to get off. And so I just went, oh, well, darling, things are very, life is very hard. And I just ran off stage. <laughs> you could hear everybody in the pit. It was about a half a page too early. <laughs> <laughs> and Ken Grigsby was like, Man. and Katie, God bless her, Katie Clark was like, she knows the show, but she just left me. She's like, okay, and now I'm singing a song. <laughs> <laughs> no, my my favorite thing with Dividing Day was because I, I must have been the first, second time I, I was on for you, Miss Thing, and um, the lighter, the lighter was set. To, you have to light that cigarette just in time. You have this amount of time to get all the cigarette smoked and make the move to sing the next verse. So I go and I get, you know, the cigarette, I get it out of the case you know, and I put the lighter and the flame just went. <laughs> and I, I, it was just, I think because from the draft from the bombs, you know, those tunnel, you know, I don't know. I'll just remember is this flame just flying up into my face. But I stayed calm and I got the thing lit and I just asked if it could be turned down a little bit <laughs> next time. <laughs> oh I think it was just like <laughs> scared that out of me, but I'm okay. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> you survived. Story, your story of uh, dropping your lines made me think of we didn't, as the Italians, like we were kind of screwed if we went up on a line because oh. you could just make up something oh. and make it sound Italian, but you're like, I don't know where to go with this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, try, try going up. In the middle of a rest at Downstage Center at the Metropolitan Opera. Oh, did that happen to you? <gasps> no, it did not. In what oh. language? No. It was Italian. It was Cosi. It was uh, Cosi Fantuzzi. Oh, oh my gosh! Did you tell did you pull out some like fire batons and just do yeah. something like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so funny you say that, Michael, because the cat, the the people around me. I was by myself with Christopher Maltman, and the people around me were our extras. They were called supers, and they were uh, Coney Island performers. So we had fire swallowers. We had <laughs> everything around me, but it was a reset, so the entire orchestra wasn't playing, and they turned around and stared at me, and like thirty minutes. It was only the harpsichord. 30 minutes pass, I said to myself inside, cause I knew it backwards and forwards. I even knew what it meant. I said, just open your mouth, it'll come. And I began to sing gibberish on the metropolitan. I started going, I stopped again. Another half hour went by, my, my face was the color of fire. And then finally Christopher Maltman, knowing his cue line said, in Gloria. And of course there's no mic, so no one could hear him. So he goes, in Gloria. And I went, Bing Gloria, and walked off stage. <laughs> it was the word, I'll never get over it for the rest of my life, but I tell the story over and over again, because I'm like, it doesn't matter where you are, you can do that next You call. know what, now, now for people that didn't know that story, like me, I'd never heard that story. Oh. See, now it proves that you're human, because you have superhuman capabilities, so that now we know you're human. <laughs> <laughs> right there, down center. Hey, in honor of us getting uh, up to you know four thousand dollars with the match, I think that Seth and uh, Matt are going to be doing something special right now as a thank you to those viewers, right? Yes. Um, Matt and I rehearsed today because we have a concert. Why don't you put up our little banner? 
We have our oh. concert coming up this Sunday. Yeah, the Seth Piazza concert series. reunion is really just a, a promo for this concert. On yeah, this Sunday. is a giant promo for our <laughs> Sunday concert. But Matt, I thought I thought we'd leave him wanting more. Let's just do the last half of your Piazza song. Okay. And we'll do the whole thing. We'll do the whole thing on Sunday. Oh, no, you have to mute this. It is mute. Oh, there's still an echo. Right, I just I have to put my my brain yeah, on real fast. All right. Matt, I'm going to begin from that headachy piano solo that I always hit the wrong notes on. Right before Malai Non Puo. Yeah, that's something like that, Seth. Okay, get back to me. <clears throat> Male non può marmi non così, o Clara, non amerà un ragazzino, non può amare un ragazzino, Dio, papà, Clara, 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 mio luce, mio cor, mi senza che mi mancava, si tu. Se tu, Clara, 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 mia luce, mio cor, solo nel buio, non ero vivo. Oh, Dio, datemi mia Clara. to watch it every night it was about me <laughs> oh, man. oh that was beautiful, that was beautiful. beautiful. It's, it's not in the original key just, just oh, but it, will be, it will be this Sunday at the Seth concert series <laughs> get your tickets now um, Michael Perez I just don't know if you're Castmates know um, your full scope of talent because they do know about the mm. Italian and about the black hair, but do they know about the backflips? Michael Bress, he was flipping in Kiss Me Kate, he was flipping down in a three-story oh, tower backwards. Unbelievable. I'll never forget it. That oh. was Star Search. And Matt, I don't know what you're laughing about because your shirt was open during your song. If you say you want to kick it with the fresh step crew, you gotta be fresh to fresh to fresh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Look at that bomb mod. Hold on, want? that bomb on is fierce. Check it out. Look how high. If you say you want to kick it with the Fresh Step crew, you got to be fresh to fresh to fresh. Step into the year yeah, take that, Powell shot. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, yeah. the fresh you Step crew. That's um, so great. That's how I got my Broadway debut, by the way. What'd you say? That's how I got my first Broadway show. <laughs> What's the David Letterman number? Yeah. That was all the other guys were in uh, Footloose, the musical, and... ACC Ulo choreographed Footloose, choreographed that little team, and uh, that's I, they, that's how I got the job. Wow. Is it nice. you singing? Wow. Is it okay. you singing or are you lip syncing? No, it's it's like one guy just doubled, tripled. It's one guy on the track. It's not any of us. Oh, so this is you lip syncing. We're the fresh step. Girl, don't you know? How have I never seen this? 
Yes. How? I love, I love her going back to everyone's face is like. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt, Incredible. you have had an obligation to show me that over the last 20 years. Where has that been? So let me just, so you all know my nickname is Maddie Fresh. That's how I got the nickname. That group was called Fresh Step, like the kitty litter. Oh. And, and so that was, that's how I got Maddie Fresh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm mad that I don't have never seen that. Oh. That's too much. Thanks for sharing. Hey, I want to give a little update here because um, Matt singing did indeed bring in more money. So now we're at two thousand one hundred and seventy-five dollars. So someone do the math to doubling that. Yes. And so I'm thinking, Seth, that maybe we can get twenty-five. What's that? Forty-three fifty. Oh, thank you. What if you fifty? Thank you. Thank you. We want to get to five thousand or more, so maybe there'll be another song, Kelly O'Hara. If we raise some more money, if we raise some more money, yes. So and so everyone start donating. But before we continue donating, yeah, keep donating. But listen, we can't have a line in the Piazza reunion if Vicky doesn't tell my favorite story. Oh yes, come Vicky, on, Vicky. Oh God, the Tony story. Yes, oh, ma'am. Oh. So there are some donations. Oh, here. Right, there so are maybe, some donations. Hey, Michael they're in the Barres, private chat. Michael, can you go to the private chat and look at? Uh, from David Cass at 910, he was sending in some donations. Thank you so much for this amazing reunion and all you have done for the arts community. My donation is in honor of Kelly's voice teacher, Florence Birdwell. Aww. And we're all glad Kelly is not selling ribbons in a department store. <laughs> <laughs> Lamont oh, it's, Russell, it's from Lamont you. Russell. I know Lamont. Oh, thank you so much. A oh, wonderful nope. teacher. Oh, thank you. Lamont, you know, Lamont is, did, um, after the tragedy in Las Vegas, Kelly, you know, he, his choir did What the World Needs Now is Love. Yes. We I met know. him mm -hmm. when we were there, right? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Hey, Michael, there's go up one. Actually, Michael, there's a couple of uh, ahead of uh, above that. See, there's three above that. I do. Uh, how could I not donate again tonight with the matching gift happening when I love Light in the Piazza so very much? Thank you all for transporting us to Florence. Hello to Michael, who was in the last show I saw in February 2020 wow. in Mabel at Broadway Encores. Can't wait to go back. Susan Cassidy in Massachusetts, $25. Thank you, Susan Cassidy. Yes, Queen. Patty Cohenauer, how's your vision? Can you read two no, of them? Oh, my vision sucks. Vicky, <laughs> you want to read the next two? Who mm -hmm. In what? the private chat? Yes, what happened here? Thank you. What, ha well, what did happen? <laughs> what, what happened? happened? Mother, thank you, Piazza cast. <laughs> I have been obsessed with Piazza since the first time I heard Kelly sing the title song. Was lucky enough to play Clara a few years ago in what was the most incredible theater experience I've ever had. <laughs> show is magic and I'll be forever grateful Carolyn from Massachusetts great Margaret I do agree with more. you Carolyn do more? Yeah, there's, my heart is so full do the my heart is so full my heart is so full my heart is so full seeing these <laughs> beautiful people reminisce about this special show I had the great privilege of being a member of this Broadway of the Broadway stage management team for Piazza and I agree, it was once in a lifetime experience that we'll all carry, we will all carry with us forever. Love and miss you all. Jen Nelson. Jen Nelson Lane. Aww. Aww. These are so nice. God, people just love the show. Okay, now Vicky can. Oh, yeah. So it's Tony Ward night, and this is between Vicky and Kelly. As usual, Kelly had to save you. Go. <laughs> <laughs> As usual. Well, we were all nervous, weren't we? And exhausted. Oh. And. Craig wrote a monologue for Margaret and gave it to me like that morning. Mm -hmm. And I, I was too, we were too busy, right? We had to, we had to come to Radio City and do the rehearsal. And then we had to go and rest for half an hour. And then we had our matinee. And then I had forgotten my ticket, even though I taped it to my dressing room mirror, I forgot it. Oh, no. And then Maddie, Maddie Melchiori had to run back to the theater and get it and bring it. Oh, wow. Cause I forgot. They wouldn't, they wouldn't let you in? It wouldn't let me in. What? And it was taped to my, I knew I was going to forget it. So I taped it to the dressing room mirror and I forgot it anyway. And then we were there and then I was just so for touched. And then, um, <laughs> then I was nervous about the new monologue. And then, and then Adam, didn't Adam win? Didn't Adam win best musical, right? Yes. Best score. The, score. the score. And the, and the curtain was flying up. And applause, applause, and this guy comes around the corner and I was, I had the, the new monologue taped inside our fake little piazza set, inside one of our fake towers. 
And I was like, you know, going over the monologue, going over the monologue. And this guy I'd never seen before, huge guy, stagehand, hands me a mic that was this big <laughs> and throws it in my hand and says, your mic is out. Just use this. Well, I already had my prop. I had my book and I had a new monologue. And, and Kelly saw the whole thing from way on the other side of the stage. And I don't know how you knew to look at me in that moment just because you did. And she saw me freeze. And she jumped out of the set as the curtain was flying up and she just jumped up in her little turquoise dress and said, mother, just do it, okay? Just do it. It's just, it's like, it's like your newscaster. Just like, just like you do it in the news. Just do it. You can do it. And I just went, I can do this. And I, I took the mic and you're gonna show that clip, aren't you? Okay, so the rest you just have to see. There's a guy that's like, you have to know that's a steady cam who's following me and I've got a new monologue I've never done before. And at some point they tell me to give the mic back. So that's all you know. At some point he was at your knees going, give me the bike. And you barely go, and then you <laughs> hand it over. It's hysterical. <laughs> oh my God. And my son was sweating in his little plastic tuxedo. Okay, and I'm sure, oh, anyway. You keep looking to the side, looking to the side. Okay, here we go. It's so it's it's the microphone, it's the little, it's the gloves, it's the uh, it's so panicky. Here we go. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Florence, Italy. It's my favorite place on earth. The openness, the light. My husband and I took our honeymoon here before the Second World War, and this is my first time back. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Barbara Johnson, and this is my daughter, Clara. She's a special child. We've just arrived here from North Carolina. And I can't wait to introduce her to the city. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. That was perfect. It was so smooth. It was so smooth. It was. It's Tony Award winning worthy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I want to say something about that. That that show was that little award or whatever, you know, that belongs to everybody in the show. Because that we everybody is in my heart in that performance, and every single person helped me create it. It was not a solo mm -hmm. endeavor, so that was a Tony Award for every single person mm -hmm. in that company. We all did it together. That's the truth. Yeah, I feel the same. I feel the same. Wow. Well, I I think that's an incredibly generous and beautiful sentiment. It doesn't surprise me a bit that Vicki Clark would say that, but I also stood in that churchyard every single night next to all these other people frozen in that tableau, listening to Fable and losing my shit every yes. single night. That was to this day, yes. I think one of the most profound things I've ever had surrounding me. You, you earned every bit of that trophy. <laughs> Um, since we're talking about your son, Vicky, can we just completely segue shows and talk about the time your little son came to see how to succeed? <laughs> Involuntary snorting, once again. Okay, so <laughs> everybody knows TL. Like, I mean, he's grown up at all these theaters, so these 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 folks, you know, helped raise my kid. And um, anytime you see him now for the rest of his life, he'll 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 know who you are and 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 love you. But the first, he wanted to see what mommy did. He knew what mommy did because, you know, you, I, he saw me in that big red wig, the Smitty wig, and he came to see how to succeed. And by this time, Matthew, it was Matthew and, and Sarah Jessica Parker, who weren't married yet. They weren't engaged yet, but it was pretty close. And he was up in one of the boxes and, um, and he was told to be very quiet, you know, and the mommy would be coming on. And so when I came on, you know, and I'm standing in between them, he said, hi. Hi, mommy. And I heard his little voice and I was just like, oh God, oh God. And I saw Matthew kind of look over at me and, and then he's like, hi, mommy. And then it was like, I wasn't able to talk back to him. He's like, hi, mommy. <laughs> hi, mommy. So it was, he wanted to be heard. And then, and then I heard, you know, the sound of a sock being stuffed into a small child's mouth. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then the rustling of curtains, you know, and like people like running downstairs. And then, and then we had these big, heavy doors we had to push through. And then when the doors opened and closed, I heard, bye, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obsessed with the bookend. Yeah. With the what? With the bookend? The bookend of it. <laughs> from high to bye. <laughs> Um, by the way, Matt Morrison, just from you, just during your song, which was like half of it, we raised two hundred dollars. Just wow. saying. All right, now we're up. To, I love. We, so much more than that. We've never had more updates in this, but we're up to two thousand three hundred and twenty-five dollars. This is a lot for an hour. Let me ask you: Does anybody know anyone that had any experience with the Actress Fund? <laughs> Vicky's already sweating. <laughs> anyone know anyone that had any experience with the Actress Fund? Yes, Kelly O'Hara. Well, I think, you know, famously, uh, Actors Fund helped uh, helped us raise a lot of money for my beautiful friend, Katie O'Hara, who you guys were so lovely to as well. And in, in her last months, you know, she had a, a counselor there who helped her go through some of the medical bills. There was definitely a lot of payments being made on the, those, you know, they were just astronomical. And um, I think there was a good support system there for Katie. So that was very, that's very meaningful to me. Yeah, they really stepped up for Katie. That, yes. Um I was I always told the story. I knew someone uh, someone from a piano bar that had AIDS and couldn't afford his piano. And the actress fund literally bought him a new piano. It's like they they're really hands on with whether whatever kind of needs you you need. Um, so we say bravo to the money we're raising tonight. Why don't we maybe see how much we can raise? Kelly, why don't you haul out? I recorded the piano part for Kelly's song. It almost killed me. Who was the pianist on Broadway? Because that piano playing is so good. Who is that? Did anybody know? Well, that uh, different ones. That would have been. Um, Oh my God! It wasn't Ted. Ted was conducting. Ted oh, was it conducting. was it Scott? No, Scott. Oh I'm embarrassed right now. Oh, oh, Fred. Fred Lassen. Fred Lassen. No. Uh, no, it wasn't Fred. It's been it's been 16 years. Yeah, we have no, to look tough. it up. Uh, he was well, wonderful. Dan Lipton, who still plays with me, played a lot during. But I don't know if he who did on the Broadway album. I'm gonna yeah. look. On I just remember <laughs> Christian was our first yeah. chair violinist. First. We'll violinist. get Kelly ready here. Yeah, and listen, this is this is you know Matt was all hooked up with Seth to play like like uh, the <laughs> Seth series, but I'm just using my own. So and it's such a loud song that that it's just gonna blow out anyway. But but I'm gonna sing it anyway for fun, guys. Sing yeah. it. We're gonna love it. Who, but who's the pianist? Uh, should I right, sing? Hold on. Yeah. I will okay. Hold on. Hold on. I'll sing uh, first. Should I sing first? Yeah. Why don't you? See, well, I don't want to be. Yeah. Just don't judge my piano playing. It's really hard. Okay. Oh, I'm nervous. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Mother, I've just grabbed you at the Uffizi. Oh, and uh, it was Adam and David, who's amazing. Oh, of course, Adam and David, who played for me forever. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Adam, wonderful. He's so good. And he's a great composer, too. I didn't know he played that. God, yes, so he good. is. And he can play anything. He can play jazz, he can play this. He can he's play a great jazz player, yeah. Because his mother was an opera, he's an opera singer, and he always played for Anyway, okay, you ready? I'm nervous. Go. Yeah, tune me out. Thank you. 
The reason I know it went in and out, but the reason why it started to get a little choky is because I love when this happens. Your body, unbeknownst to your mind or your intention, moves because it used to move. It used to cross yes. fingers. But I never, I haven't done that in, I probably did it at the reunion, but I haven't done it in 17 years. Like my, my fingers crossed on, on praying and crossing fingers because I used to do that in the show. And then I thought of Maddie. Oh, and then I had the song memorized at that point because I thought I that I, I didn't have to look at my lyrics. <laughs> oh wow! That reunion show was probably one of the oh. my, my most favorite times I've ever had in a theater. Uh, the ten year reunion, just being oh. with oh. you and and it was so funny because we we started out we're like okay we're all just gonna be in music stands <laughs> we're gonna do this thing it's gonna be fine. <laughs> all of a sudden, the music stands got cleared away. We all we all went back to like our our blocking and choreography and Michael. Well, we did because that's like, what started <laughs> happening. We started saying the lines, and all of us started getting up, and our bodies started moving. So we yeah. thought we don't even need to do this at stands. We <clears throat> Michael started dancing, and we all started remembering it. You know. Hey, Kelly, I want to I want to share something with you because all these years I've known you, I didn't really realize this connection with you until you sang it, and I saw you sing it live. But you know how I was saying at the top of the show, how when we were, when Julie and I were, and this is obviously months before I met Seth, and and I would be in the car with Julie and I had the CD on, and there were certain songs that I played over and over again. Of course, Fable was one of them, but also The Beauty Is was one of them. Mm. And in particular, it was the lyrics, this is wanting something, this is reaching for it, this is wishing that a moment would arrive. And those lyrics, I would rewind over and over again because I knew that after I had just adopted Julie and I knew that I needed to return to New York because I had not lived my Broadway dream. And, but it was also risky. I was in my mid thirties mm -hmm. and I was like, should I do it? Should I not? And I would listen to you over and mm -hmm. over and over again. And I truly believe Overall, the light in the piazza gave me the strength as an artist to like, my God, this is what's waiting for me in New York and I'm gonna take my chance. And in particular, Aww. those lyrics. So thank you, Adam Gettle. Thank you all of you and Kelly for that. So that's what it oh, did yeah. for me personally. Thanks. And I really think it gave me the strength to come back to New York and then I wouldn't have met wow. him and you know, all wow. the other stuff. Oh, wow. that is so beautiful. That is so, thank you, James. I never knew hey, that. You know what, can I just, because Michael put something in the in the chat here. This is very important. Yeah, Adam Ben David was one of our pianists later, but our mm -hmm. first pianist when Ted was conducting was Dan Riddle, who then actually That's took it. over as our conductor. And the reason why I have to talk about Dan is because he's he was just he it, that I, mean, I can't believe my mind went blank because Dan mm -hmm. was so integral to my process mm -hmm. and to this show because it was so hard to to take off the page what Piazza was into what we did on, on the stage. It was very different to mm -hmm. conduct it because it was all out of time. And, and um, mm -hmm. Dan was, Dan was the person who sort of built that with us as singers. And then, and then when he took over as conductor, continued that on and, and, you know, whatever. So uh, we, we have to give a big shout out to, oh, to yeah. Dan Riddle. And then later, yeah. you know, um, Kim Grigsby, you know, all of them. Yeah. Right, Dan was first. You're right. I read Adam. Adam was Adam was these uh, rehearsal pianist first. Oh, oh thank you. For wait a minute. All right, 
We're up to, we've surpassed the match. $2,630. We've gone over $5,000 raised tonight. Thank you, yes. And thank, thank you, you Matt, for this for charitable the fund. Wow, this was the What'd most... you say, Matt? I said thank you, Maggie, for the updates. We love you. Yes. Yeah. Love, Maggie. Yeah. love Maggie Oberender. Love her. Right. Thank you for doing this wonderful promo for the Seth Contest oh series, gosh. which is this Sunday. What happened? Okay, let me say something. Before we go, I just want to play this one clip of everyone together because it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So here's just a final little moment where everyone's together, and uh, it's just it's such a beautiful ending to a song. I just love it. On a central square, the city made of statues and stones. Number really ended though, was it? No, we spent after it ended. We spent the next five minutes, Matt, trying to get that wire off the hat. And one night it didn't come, and one night he went. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the number ends. Fabrizio Nacarelli. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Clara. That was just for the uh, Tonys that they made it all. Okay, I was gonna say, wait, that looks very odd. Okay. <laughs> who does that amazing on-time ball catch right on the last button? Who was that? That's amazing. Someone throws a ball in the air and catches it. Anybody? Oh, I, oh. I can't remember, I'd have to go back and look. It's David Burnham on the bike, right? David Burnham's riding the bike. Oh, yeah. is it Burnham? We have to talk about Dear beloved Joseph, Joseph Saravo, yes. Saravo, who played the priest in our production, and we lost him this spring. And he, mm. he's the most incredible cast member and the most amazing, loving person. That is just, he was so such a beautiful soul. He was the one that sang Equatenus Masculinum et Femininum. You know, oh, he, oh, I will say personally for me that like seventy percent of my show was built on Joe teaching me like the true um, ad lib responses that I would have as an Italian that were originally not scripted and were off mic and half of them made it into the show and are part of the scripted material because Craig was sort of part of that whole conversation and Joe was so undeniably authentic and he was so passionate about the authenticity of what we were saying in Italian. I think he had a huge impact on the overall quality of the Italian aspect mm. of the show. Yeah. He, like also covered, he, he also covered Signor Naccarelli and, and um, it was awesome. It was beautiful in that part. Yeah. yeah. You just felt like you were there. I mean, it really was one of those environmental shows, even though it wasn't environmental, but you felt like you were literally in Italy. Just yeah. everything about it, man. Oh, that was gorgeous. Um, guys, listeners, thank you so much. And viewers. Yes, thank you. Amazing no, no, donations. Let's go more hours. Let's go more hours. <laughs> <laughs> Where did Patty go? Patty, She's Patty. Bad. The Wi-Fi wi -Fi. guy. Yeah, I'm trying to look. She hasn't oh, come no. back yet. I oh, know. Yeah. Um, tomorrow night is Dream Girls. Um, oh my god! And I, I know this was. I got a real kick tonight. If you say you want to kick it with the Fresh Step Crew, <laughs> <laughs> you'll never live that down, Fresh Steppy. Fresh <laughs> fresh fresh you got to get with the Fresh Steppy. Oh, good. Patty's crew. back in time to say goodbye. Oh, hey. Hey. Don't leave Across us. the country. What could I say? Yeah. Oh. I love you guys so much. And I love you too. I know, you know, there's so many people that aren't here because you can only fit so many boxes, but Mark Harlick and let's name them like yeah, who, yeah Laura Griffith and and David David Bonano. David Burnham. Yep. Um 
So many. Yeah. So many. Anyway. Prudence Wright Holmes. Prudence Wright Holmes. Michelle Mano. Michelle Mano. Mano. Yeah. Oh, um, oh, uh. Oh, <laughs> look at us. We're just like we do. We do. So Christopher, good with Christopher with Chris Sarandon, Chris, Mark Harlick, and Chris Sarandon, my Italian oh, boyfriend. Chris Sarandon, right? Uh, Chris. Uh, Why? Hi. Oh, hello. Just, hello. hello. <laughs> but so many. Yeah, we um, uh, we had the most the most beautiful family, and it was the one. Just to say this really quickly, uh, Jonathan Butterell, who uh, musical oh. stage show. We, it was one of those casts where you started, I was thinking of the Friends reunion the other night because Joey said the only time they didn't gather in the back hall was the night right. that he hurt his shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. It made me think of, Piazza is really the only show that we um, we would do those uh, circles, but we'd also do those before warm up, like warm ups where we like massaged each other. Oh yeah. We're not appropriate now, but, <laughs> but we, were, we were just so, uh, you know, close heart, you know, emotionally. Um, we were made to be that way. We were, it was that kind of thing. And I thought every show would be that way. And I've had wonderful mm -hmm. groups, but I'm just saying it seemed to be more connected in the oh, heart. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. And this once, in a, once in a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Seth. Thank you, James. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Guys. I love you guys. It was love good you. to see love everyone. You. Mm -hmm. I, love I love your face. Mother. <laughs> <laughs> thank you everyone we'll see you tomorrow night and thank bye. you Angie Torres okay bye we love you we bye. love you guys You're gonna have to meeting. okay they turned us off oh. they finally turned us off they kicked us out oh my god it's so hard to play this <laughs> I just played it. I can't even <laughs> <play it. laughs>